So here we have a tree, obviously, and beneath that we have brand new clouds. If you had asked me how to cut out this absolutely complicated tree a year or so ago, I would have given you a fantastic trick. All you do is double click on the right hand side of the tree layer, go to the blend if section right here. Since we are removing the bright blue areas, from the blend if drop down, choose blue and we are removing it from the current layer. So take the slider of the current layer from right to left and just like that, just like magic, the sky just goes away. But the edges are not nice. If you just zoom in, they're very harsh. So you know what to do, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the slider to break it apart to make the transition smoother. But still, we need to do uh, something with the edges, work with the edges, and this would be a fantastic technique. However, with time, we have to develop our skills. We have to update with the brand new features coming into Photoshop. Instead of doing all that, all you do now is go to Select Sky. That's all. And then hold the Alt key or the Option key. Click on the Mask button right here. Done. That's it, really. So I don't want to confuse you. You'll find a lot of Photoshop tutorials for cutting out trees, including my own. And although all of those techniques have their own applications, it is important that we stay updated with the times. Have a look at this. Even if you zoom in a lot, look at the edges, look at the branches. The details are still intact. We don't have to deal with the halos. We don't have to deal with anything. Somehow, it just perfectly does it. You can even take it a step further and match it automatically with sky replacement. So I'm starting from scratch. We don't have the cloud layer, nothing. We just have this image open. All we have to do is to go to edit and then sky replacement. That's all. You have all different kinds of skies and automatically it matches with one of them. You can choose different skies from right here. Do not choose dramatic skies. So if it's a daylight scene, do not choose a night sky. If you do choose that, you have to do some matching with the curves. There are other videos about that. But right now, let us choose a sky that goes with it. So I'm going to click on plus and you can add your own sky. That's up to you. And that's what we're going to do right here. Let's go with this one. Hit open. It will not update the sky. You will have to select it right here. And then you get a plethora of control, for example, for shifting the edge. So if you shift it to the right, have a look. It's getting more and more inside. If you shift it to the left, you'll see more and more edges and details. It is just crazy good. Now let's take a look at this one. Here the sky is a little bit complicated. So let's go to select sky. Let's see how it does. Hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask button. We could have also gone to sky replacement, but let us try this method. You have more manual control. Let's take a look at the mask. So here's the mask. By the way, to take a look at the mask, you can hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the mask to view it. White are the areas which are selected, black are the areas which are not. It is not perfect as you can see. And you can take the time to work on it by taking the brush tool and painting with white or black. Now here's a tip. Change the blend mode of the brush from normal to overlay. When you do that, right now white is selected. No matter how much we try to paint in the black areas, it just won't do anything. If we choose black, no matter how much we try to paint in absolute white areas, it just won't paint. So it tries to maintain boundaries. So here's what you can do. Decrease the flow to about 20%. Ensure the blend mode is set to overlay. And then erase these areas with black. There you go. It wouldn't paint on the inside, even if you go inside a little bit. That's fine. There you go. There you go. Similarly with white, you can paint on the inside. Now, you do not have to do any of the process right now. Bring in the new sky and then be the judge. Click on the layer back again. So I'm going to drag and drop this one. Let's make it larger. Hold the Alt key or the Option key to make it larger from the center. There you go. Now let's bring the sky beneath the tree and it just works. Now the mountains may not fit well. So let's just make it even larger. There you go. Bring it down. Sometimes you have to do clever things to make your composite work and it's absolutely fine. Now just look at the overall masking here. If you zoom in, everything looks in place. But if you have a look at the mask right here, it's not perfect. There, there are a couple of areas which are left out, but somehow these imperfectness is helping the image blend even better. And that is why this channel's name is Pixim Perfect. So let's click on the layer to bring it back again. Now matching the tree with the background is a completely different thing. You can use adjustments like curves, hue saturation. There are videos on that which you can check out later. For right now, you can use a color lookup table on the overall thing to bring them together. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose color lookup. And I'm going to use crisp warm, my all time favorite. And for some reason, it is not working. Let's go back to crisp warm. 
Now it is working, but it's adding way too much contrast. So we're gonna go with edgy amber and decrease the opacity like this. Now the entire thing is going together well. It's like it's the same image. You can also use our Piximperfect compositing plugin. If you don't know what it is, it has everything you need for compositing arranged step by step, right from matching the elements of a composite to extracting shadows, to creating grain, to color grading presets, everything. It was featured by Adobe as well. You can check it out right here if you want to. So let's open up the plugin and inside of that go to presets and then you can click on create thumbnails. This will create previews of how you your image will look like in all of these different presets. So let's say I like the first one, click on it. Maybe you want a different variation of this. You can click on random and stop at what you like. Let's say you really like the vibrance of this one. Let's stop right here and click on this check. So it's applied. On top of it, you can again click on create thumbnails. And from here, you can stack different presets. So let's try this one. Let's try this one. See which one looks good to you. I'm going to go with this one. Just hit apply. There you go. And then you can of course control the opacity of this. So let's apply it at about 64%. From here, I would make the tree a bit darker, control the highlights of the sky. That is a secondary thing. But if you just want to cut out, do not ignore select sky. Now, when it comes to creating drastic composites, like using this daylit tree on a dark sunset background, you would have to go in and manually create a mask. There are techniques for it, very easy techniques for it, and you would have to do matching as well. So right now, I masked it out. It was an amazing mask. If you just zoom in and have a look at the mask, it's such a good mask. Even then, it is not matching. I had to do several adjustments with blend modes, filters, different adjustment layers, just to get it to match. And if you want to learn how to do that, there's a video exactly on it. So that's it for this video. Don't be afraid to try the new techniques over what you have learned so far. All of them are still important, but it's also important that you try new things. And I hope this one helped you. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating. Go!